Today we're going to play ball with the York Revolution on point. Well, welcome everybody to On Point. But wait a minute. Hey, wait, downtown. I, no, 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 no. We're not going to go through this again. The last time I did a show with the Revolution, you started the show with me. You almost took over the whole show. We're not going to do this again. Besides, you can't talk anyway. How am I going to interview you? Where's Where's Doug? What have you done with Doug? Come on. Come on. Okay, downtown. All right. All right, all right. Come on. You're in my seat. Come, Come on. on. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, out of go there. Down out the of there downtown. Come on. Out of there. Go rub down the base. You're out of there. Go, go to the showers. That's right. <laughs> that God, guy, you know, you did win. You've got to control that bird, Doug. What can I say? There, there is there is no controlling the force that is downtown. The force. I I I I understand. I've uh, I've met him personally. I know exactly what you're talking about. So anyway, uh, TV uh, fans out there everywhere, this is Doug Epler, and uh, Doug is the. Let's see, what's your exact title with the Revolution, there, Doug? Well, by day, I am mild mannered oh, director of marketing and communications. Uh, yeah. But the real fun comes when we get to game time, and I get to throw on the crazy jackets and serve as Diamond Doug, our on-field. Uh, master of ceremonies. Oh, I'm re I'm really dealing with Mr. Showbiz is really who I'm dealing with. <laughs> you, you probably live for that. You probably live for well, that. Well, I, I do appreciate that. I do appreciate you guys sending the just only the green M and M's to my dressing room. That was appreciated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I uh, I do have a bone to pick with you. I mean, I, I never got an invitation to. Uh, to shoot uh, T-shirts. Well, no, you couldn't have. You couldn't have anyway last year anyway. So what am I talking about? So and yeah, but that's maybe the I, I, I sent the invitation it last year. I, I sent <laughs> the invitation last year, Ken. You, it's it's not yeah, my know. fault. I know, I know, I know. It's the fault of the virus, but we will get into that later. So look, let's uh, let's keep on rolling here. Uh, the uh, the York Revolution is alive and well and living in New York, Pennsylvania. They've got a brand new season that's ready to uh, hit the field. And um, and you've got uh, fans uh, everywhere in uh, York County, uh, Lancaster County, Chester County, and over on the other side of the line in Maryland, just ready, willing, and able to come to the game. So uh, let's see, where should we start? Uh, of course, there are still some people worried about the virus. So um, is it going to be a safe environment? Let's start there. Absolutely. That's always the top priority for us here is the comfort and safety of Revolution fans. Uh, and, you know, even the fans here for the visiting team. Um, so we have been taking the time that we had on our hands to prepare for our triumphant return and make sure that we are absolutely safe and uh, doing our part to prevent the spread of the virus. So uh, we've got a number, of in, a number of initiatives in place here at the ballpark that people will notice as soon as they arrive. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you threw in there that you're also interested in the health and well-being of the visiting fans too. That's very, very kind of you to, to want to worry about the visiting fans too. <laughs> So, uh, well, we okay. like to be all inclusive that way. It's that's that's really sweet of you. That's that's that, it's heartwarming to know that you you feel that way. Uh, well, you know, besides uh, besides that bug that's been bugging everybody for the past year or more, it seems that Major League Baseball has been up to uh, all sorts of uh, I don't know if you can say shenanigans, but they've been up to all sorts of of tricks, of changes, and things when it. Uh, as it applies to uh, minor league ball. So uh, how has, uh, I'll just give you the general question. How has this affected the revs? Well, I'll turn that around, Ken, and say that the revs and the Atlantic League, you could argue, have affected Major League Baseball. Uh, first of all, we're thrilled with our relationship with Major League Baseball and that the Atlantic League was the first professional partner league that uh, Major League Baseball created such a relationship with. 
And that was the result of our previous long-going relationship with them. It's always been fairly easy for our players to leave the Atlantic League to go either back to the majors or to make their debut in the majors after impressing scouts here in our ballparks. And uh, in 2019, as you recall, in your last visit, we talked about some of the experimental rules that Major League Baseball thought might improve the game and asked us, um, because they considered Atlantic League play to be of a high enough caliber to be an accurate test, uh, to try those things in our ballpark. So we did. We had uh, automated balls and strikes through a radar system above the home plate. Um, we enlarged the size of our bases. We limited the number of mound visits. We required pitchers to face a minimum of three batters or finish an inning before they could be pulled out of a game. And those experiments proved highly successful and a number of those things um, either made their way to the majors or to the other minor leagues that are now under the direction of Major League Baseball. And we were thrilled that they were so pleased to the, come back to us this I see year. The box. Yeah, I, every time I watch an Orioles game, I see the box on the screen. And uh, I know that the umpires there are getting the cues in their ear. Why don't you tell the folks what exactly are the umpires hearing? I mean, they're not listening to uh, your radio station there in New York while they're uh, while they're calling the game, but they're 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 getting something right. else so, over their 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 earbuds. Exactly, they are getting prompts from the automated ball strike system or ABS, which starts with a radar panel that hangs above home plate, and it has cameras and a 3D sensoring system that is detecting where the ball is crossing the plate and whether or not it is in the strike zone that has been given to the computer. That computer then speaks to the, or that radar panel speaks to a computer in our control room, which speaks to uh, a cell phone in the pocket of the home plate umpire who hears it on an earbud and is told ball or strike virtually simultaneously. It's, it's exciting. And it blows my mind all at the same time that uh, that now yep. the umpire and it's, gets that it's one of help. Right, and it's it's one of the changes that we're continuing to implement this year, as well as two others that Major League Baseball asked us to test this year. Uh, the first is called the double hook, where your designated hitter is linked with your starting pitcher. So it now requires some strategy on the part of a manager to determine how long to leave in his starting pitcher, because when he pulls the pitcher, you lose the designated hitter and the either the replacement pitcher or another defensive change takes that spot in the batting order. And the other rule, now that will be, the double hook will be in place at the start of our season. The other experiment we're conducting will take place beginning in our second half. We'll use the first half as a baseline, and then in the middle of our season, we will be moving the pitcher's rubber back 12 inches to see what effect that has on batting averages and more important, balls in play, which is really what Major League Baseball is trying to increase. Oh, Doug, you're gonna have the purists uh, knocking on your door saying, what are you doing to my precious game? But, but, well, but. Remind remind the fans what happened in the late 1800s, what they did with the mound in the late 18, 1800s to change the game. Remind them. Right. Uh, rightfully so, people get very defensive of our national pastime, but sometimes they get a little selective in their memory, uh, which is a <laughs> long one in the yeah. course of baseball. And uh, there was a time uh, way back in the late 1800s when the mound was only 50 feet and six inches away from home plate. And toward the end of the century, baseball changed that and moved it back to 60 feet and six inches where it's been ever since. But what's happened, Major League Baseball tells us, and I think fans will probably agree, is pitchers have become so dominant that um, a lot of times it, it could be four minutes or so before you actually see a ball in play during an inning. 
could be four minutes of simple back and forth from the pitcher to the catcher, um, which, with the exception of a no-hitter, when we're getting close to that, doesn't make for necessarily the most exciting baseball. So Major League Baseball has done a lot of study and a lot of research, and they've determined that moving the mound, sorry, moving the rubber, the pitcher's rubber back 12 inches would, for example, take a 92 or 93 mile per hour fastball and turn it into a 90 some mile per hour fastball by the time it reaches the uh, strike zone. And they believe and hope that that extra microsecond will give batters a little more time to respond to a pitch and have a better chance of putting that, that ball in play. So that's the theory or the, the question. And we are the folks that they've asked to help answer that question and test out that theory. So we're looking forward to doing that in the second half of our Atlantic League season here in York. Yeah, that's another exciting thing that's happening. And I'm going to be very, very interested to see how that works out. What about infielders? Uh, what's this business we were talking about the other day where the infields better stay on the dirt and not go wandering too far out <laughs> into the outfield? Right. One of the other questions that Major League Baseball had was the impact of the shift on balls in play. And previously with us, they had asked us to experiment by requiring that you have two infielders on either side of second base and they must be in the dirt. For the 2021 season, they've modified that slightly and no longer have the requirement about two infielders on either side of second but they are still requiring that infielders be on the dirt as the pitch is released. And again, the hope is that this will be another uh, opportunity to put more balls in play, which frankly is what fans have been telling Major League Baseball they want. Major League Baseball tells us that in a survey they conducted, the first thing the fans wanted to see or what they wanted to see most were triples, followed by doubles, followed by singles. The last thing they wanted to see, frankly, was strikeouts. So um, they also indicated they wanted to see base running and the chances of that improve if the infielders uh, don't have that extra little get up on the ball that helps them get the throw back to the bag before the runner gets there. Yeah, so when the fans come to the field there at uh, People's Bank Park, uh, they're going to be not only seeing great baseball, but it, they're going to be almost like in a scientific lab, a baseball lab, if you will. And and they're going to be seeing the, the future of uh, baseball unfold in front of their very eyes. It's a distinct possibility. Again, if you look at some of the things that have been put in place by Major League Baseball, many of them were tested here first. Um, one of the things that we actually had in place without the prompting of Major League Baseball or the request uh, was our extra inning rule, whereby you put a runner on second base at the start, at the top of the 10th inning um, in, a, in the hopes of shortening the games a little bit. Sometimes those extra inning games could go pretty long. And we experimented with that many, many years ago. And lo and behold, it's now in place at Major League Baseball as well. So, you know, we do tell people that when they come to our games, they're not only coming for the fun of downtown and the wackiness in the stands and the crazy games we play, but also, um, the action on the field during baseball and the possibility of seeing the future of baseball. Well, you just educated me again. I had no idea that that 10th uh, uh, inning rule about the uh, runner on second base originated in the Atlantic Baseball League. Hey, well, I don't think we can quite take credit for it, uh, but we, we certainly saw the value in it a couple years ago as well. And I think what the data from our league showed was a contributing factor or certainly something that Major League Baseball took into account. So, you know, we, we are happy that uh, the Atlantic League and the York Revolution and all of our fellow teams in the league um, have that relationship with Major League Baseball, that they are looking to us for some information, they're consulting with us, and uh, we're working together to, uh, to shape the game. Well, I'll give you the credit to you guys. I'll <laughs> in my book, you guys me personally, it, it was it, yeah, it was yeah, all I'll me. Be a historical revisionist, you know, and I'm sure downtown That's will right. agree with me. So, 
I've got him to back Always, me up. Yes. Well, well yes. look, uh, you've taken me to school. You've taken my audience to school about all these amazing changes in uh, uh, y- your baseball league and Major League Baseball, things to come for the future. Now let's get down to brass tacks here. Uh, this season, this season in the Atlantic League, uh, I understand you've got some, let's start with some new teams in the league. Yes. We were ready in 2020 to welcome an expansion team from Gastonia, North Carolina. Uh, And they have dubbed themselves the Honey Hunters and are excited to join us. Of course, they didn't get to make their debut in in 2020. Um, So 2021 gets to be their triumphant uh, entrance into the Atlantic League stage. Um, but by the, at the same time, we are welcoming two teams who uh, were shuffled around a bit as Major League Baseball was doing its contraction and its changes. And uh, that brings to us the Lexington Legends from Kentucky and the West Virginia Power, who are uh, longstanding teams with deep fan bases um, who are excited to be playing in the Atlantic League with us this year, and we are thrilled to welcome them. So, yes, uh, in addition to all the other fun changes we talked about, um, folks who come to People's Bank Park this year will get the chance to see not one, not two, but three brand new teams. Okay, well, maybe we can get some new rivalries uh, going on there in the Atlantic League. How about the number of games? Oh, yeah, those are are easy to come by. (laughs) How many games this season? We'll get 60 games in. So we're almost back to the same number we we played before this virus thing, which we're thrilled about. Okay, 60 total games? 60 home games, I apologize. 120 for the season. Yeah. 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 Yeah, 60 games here at People's Bank Park, 60 games on the road. Okay. Um, Well... Look, what are the fans going to see new this year? Of, co- of course, they're going to be thrilled just that uh, they're having the revolution back in town. They're going to be thrilled that they can be back at People's Bank Park. Um, are, are the game times going to be the same? Is there going to be new attractions, uh, new things in between the, the innings? Uh, did, did I already say new food at the uh, at the concession stands? All that wonderful stuff. Yes. Uh, the answer to all of the above is yes. The things that yeah. people have liked and enjoyed are staying the same. Um, our game times will stay the same. Um, we will be playing at 6.30 for our evening games. And on Sundays, we'll be uh, playing at... Uh, uh, we actually did move our Sunday games back an hour just to give folks a little time to uh, perhaps changed out of their church attire and throw on the jersey and hats and everything. But other than that, all those things are the same. In terms of the improvements, if you will, uh, we've got a brand new area um, just over my shoulder. Um, It's called the White Claw Terrace. And it was already one of the more popular areas of the ballpark, kind of a general admission area uh, where we just had some stool seating and a counter. Um, We have cleaned that up, expanded it, uh, really freshened up its look, put in some new furniture and what have you. And we think that's going to be a, a wildly popular part of the ballpark. Um, we have, of course, the uh, Breakers Brew House, which has um, typically 50 different craft beers in it. And we will probably cycle through and, and uh, welcome into the ballpark in the course of a season up to 100 different craft beers over the season. So if you're a craft beer fan, Another reason to come to the ballpark. Um, also, in terms of the concessions, uh, we have partially prompted by the virus, but also just prompted by uh, efficiency gains and the, the evolution of concessions. We have installed self-serve kiosks at our concession stands, uh, which will certainly speed up the, the ordering process and be very convenient for people. And that again makes for a contactless exchange for those folks who are rightfully still uh, somewhat cautious. Uh, You go to the kiosk, you enter in your order, you give us your cell phone number, and then you go have a seat and we text you when your order's ready. And frankly, if you don't even wanna, if you don't even wanna get up out of your seat to order, 
You can do it right on your phone. And then wow. we'll send you a text when your food is ready. You just step up to the concession stand, pick it up and, and head back to the game. Um, so we're, we're pretty excited. Uh, we think these are things that, that fans are looking forward to and have been asking for. And uh, the fact that they have some extra health uh, advantages to them as well and safety advantages, that's you know icing on the cake. We're, we're thrilled to have these in place and can't wait to roll them out this year. Wow, waiter or waitress service right to the seats and the stands. Well, not so much waiter or waitress service. You become your own waiter or waitress, but you, the point oh, is, you've got to go. you don't have to stand oh, you in mean line. I've got to get out of my seat. Ah, oh. eventually, Ken. Eventually, but you only have to do it one time. Oh. You can take all the time you want in your seat on your phone, order your wings and all your different sauces, and you give us your phone number, Ken, and we will tell you, Ken, you don't have to move until right now. Okay. Oh, I got the call. The wings are ready. <laughs> All right, that's good. That's good. That, that's that's excellent stuff. Well, okay. So, uh, in the limited time we have left, real fast, uh, anything new uh, in between innings? Any new exciting games or attractions or uh, fan involvement in between innings? What's going on there? Sure. Yeah, we are looking forward to another fun, exciting season of different promotions here at the ballpark. We're bringing back. Uh, a lot of people's favorites like Star Wars Night and Harry Potter. Um, we are going to roll out some new games between innings, thanks to some great new sponsors. We're going to bring back the fan favorites like our bubble balls, where people slide into two giant clear spheres of, of plastic bubble balls and go charging at each other. Um, and that's, uh, again, thanks to one of our sponsors, that's Shipley Energy and and uh you know i i would like to I, i'll take the opportunity to say that if you're having fun at the ballpark a lot of it is because a lot of sponsors in our area wanted to bring this to people so we're thrilled to have those games back um we will be welcoming people back here for another baseball game on july 4 which uh you know can be hit or miss as to whether or not the schedule gives us a home game on independence day this year we've got one we're thrilled to have it uh, we will have that as a big event with our friends from Traditions Bank, who always contribute to a big July 4th celebration here in York. So we're looking forward to uh, to a great Revs game, hopefully a win, and then post-game fireworks. The unique thing about that is, for the first time, we are going to do simultaneously a fireworks show from inside the park, just behind me, as well as just outside of the ballpark. So for fans who are here at the game, they're going to have fireworks up close and personal. But for members of the community, uh, we're going to have a free fireworks show simultaneous with that. So it should be a huge, beautiful, big display to celebrate our country's independence. And frankly, uh, I think we're all going to be looking forward to celebrating independence from, uh, from the virus that's kept us indoors for too long. Oh, it's true. People are going to be so thrilled to be able to celebrate the 4th of July pretty much the way they have always celebrated the 4th of July. That'll be very big for you and hopefully, well, very big for the Rebs and very big for the community at large. All right, now, uh, here's a, uh, a word that's near and dear to your heart, tickets. So Doug, uh, how do they get those tickets this season? Well, lots of ways, in fact, more ways than ever. Uh, you always, of course, are welcome to come out here to People's Bank Park, stop down to the Shipley Energy ticket office, and the great folks there will uh, will take care of you in person. Uh, but, you know, if you are the Ken Kudrowskis of the world who would like the convenience of doing things from home and, and making it as simple as possible, you go to our website, yorkrevolution.com, on your computer or your smartphone, exactly. You order your tickets and... In fact, you can get electronic tickets. So you don't even have to stop in the ticket office. You don't even have to have a physical ticket. You walk up to the gate, you show us your cell phone. We scan the code right from your smartphone and you're into the ballpark. So again, it's convenient. And it also, this season in particular, benefits us for the sake of those folks who are still a little cautious and still want things to be contactless. We've got you covered. 
All right, now, um, what's the magic telephone number that they can call? Absolutely. You can always call us at 717-801-HITS. It's 717-801-4487. And that'll take you right to uh, uh, the Shipley Energy ticket office where we'll get you set up for your games. And uh, I'll, I will remind folks that if they are the type of fan who's going to get out to six, seven, maybe eight games in the course of a year, it's to their advantage to consider actually upgrading and getting one of our 10 game season memberships, which has a great rate on those tickets per game and also several other benefits that come with membership. So if you're a, if you're a fan that likes to come out a couple of times, that's a great option for you. But by the same token, it, it's always a thrill to meet the fans who are here for the first time. And uh, as you said earlier in the show, they do call, come from all over. We've had uh, the fans of Atlantic League teams in general are extremely passionate and they will follow their teams. So we know we'll have a number of fans coming to York for the first time from Lexington, Kentucky and, and West Virginia and uh, Gastonia, North Carolina. So it's a thrill to welcome them to the ballpark. Um, and last but not least, it is a real thrill to welcome back our season members, the folks who have stood by us uh, for so long. I mentioned earlier how the sponsors stuck with us through uh, the, the, uh, the, the tough times of 2020 and the absence of a baseball season. The season members were right there with them. And so many of them said, hang on to my reservation. I'll see you guys in 2021. I know you guys are going to be back and we'll be there with you. And they were right. And here we are. And, and, and we're thrilled. And we, and we thank them all. I even heard a rumor that you're going to let uh, fans from uh, Lancaster come over and actually enter your stadium. I understand. I mean, you, wow. You're Amazing. trying to get me injured, Ken. You're, you're trying to get things thrown at my brightly colored costumes. But yes, no, I'll tell you, the uh, we have so much fun with our friends in Lancaster. And that's the real point is in the off season. And during the season, we are absolutely friends, particularly with the folks in Lancaster. We've got similar origins and we've known each other for a very long time. Uh, but their fans are terrific as well. I mean, it, it is so fun when we're playing the Barnstormers because you get the Revs fans out for that rivalry. But Lancaster is so close that a number of their fans come out each and every time. And it just makes for a really high energy event. Yeah. And then naturally, our fans make the trip across the river as well. And uh, a lot of times, if we've got a night off, the staff will go out to the Lancaster ballpark because they put on a great event as well. And we just want to make a little extra noise for the Rebs. Well, you know, you've uh, you've educated me and the uh, audience about changes in baseball. We've talked about changes in the park, uh, the food, you know, the number of games and, uh, you know, how to get a hold of the tickets. Is there anything that you left out? Have you covered everything? I mean, your job depends on this now, Doug. Get it right. Yeah, well, uh, no, no pressure. Uh, I'm sweating a little here, thank you. Um, the, the, the most important thing I probably left out is that if you missed any of this, or if I didn't convey it correctly or eloquently enough, you can always get all the information you need from yorkrevolution.com. Everything you need, one fell swoop, one-stop shopping, yorkrevolution.com, all of our information on the promotions we're running, how to get tickets, um, great videos and information on our players. It's all there, and uh, we hope you'll visit soon. Well, we've just run out of time, so on that point, Doug Epler, thank you for being with me here today on Point. It was so great to have Doug Epler, Director of Marketing and Communications of the York Revolution with me here today to learn all those great things about Major League Baseball, Minor League Baseball, you name it, baseball. It'll be a thrill to be back at the ballpark this season. Hey, Ken Kedrowski here thanking you for spending time with me right here on Point.